We saw how to write a simple recursive function. It's not that hard. Uh, what's hard is actually getting recursive functions to do some useful work. And we saw we we just took a look at a very simple example of a function that's recursive and actually does some useful work. May not be exactly clear exact what what ex what it uh, accomplishes. So I'll set up a rec an iterative version of the same function. It's pretty easy to understand. And then you uh, we'll make the transition to uh, 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 the recursive version of the same same uh, problem. OK, so before we get to that, just quick review of what we need to have useful recursive functions. First of all, the function should call itself. So here is add. This is the function. takes one int, and we're calling um, itself with a smaller problem. So that's the second second thing we have to uh, satisfy. That is, we have to call itself, but it has the problem has to get smaller. And then finally, you have to have something like an if statement or some way for this recursion to stop. And once it stops, it sort of unwinds the recursion. And we'll see what that means in just a second. First, what I'll do is. I will set up an iterative function that does exactly what this should do. And maybe it'll make things easier to understand, I hope. So here it is. Here is an add function, just like in the slide that we just saw. It takes one int parameter. And it it'll just print out what the value of n is. And then it will sum up all the numbers from 1 to n in this uh, running total called sum, which is initialized to 0. That's very important in C++. And it will return sum. So for a number like 5, if you call this add function with 5, it should compute 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 10 plus 5 is 15. So we should see some we should see it print out something like the sum from 1 to 5 is 15 in this case let's compile this and run it and sure enough here's the output of c out in this add function and for the value 5 it says the sum from 1 to 5 is 15 and we can try other values if you try 6 for example save this compile it and run it it should say 21 so for n from 1 to 5 sum from 1 to 5 is 15 you add another 6 to it you should get 21 sure sure enough there it is 21 and you can try other values this is called induction those of you who've had um, something like discrete math uh, you just know that from if the sum from 1 to 6 is 21, the sum from 1 to 7 is just 7 more, 21 plus 7, 28, and so on. And this works. So now our challenge is to convert this to an, um, a recursive solution. So here's what we need to do. We have to get rid of iteration completely. And now somewhere in here we should say add and we should call it with a smaller problem we should say add n to, uh, to n minus 1 okay and then we can say the sum is equal to n plus add n minus 1 okay semicolon and I think we're done that was it we took the for loop out you put this one statement in. This is just saying sum is equal to n plus add n minus 1. This add should call add, which is where we are, with a smaller problem. Oh, here's what we're missing is the base case. Now, if n is small enough, what we need to do is we need to stop this uh, uh, recursion because otherwise we would just go into the negative values and so on and we that's not going to be useful so here's what we do is we say if n is equal to zero then we just return zero right 
And you can make it even safer by checking if n is less than or equal to 0. So you take care of both situations in one statement. But let's just assume for now that we're never going to call this function with negative values. If we call it with negative values, we're sunk. We might have problems. Alright, let's see if this works, just really quick. We don't know. The sum from 1 to 7 is 28. Good. Note that uh, we actually do get this printed many times. This tells us that we are called, this function is getting called many times. In this case, what we can actually check, it's, it gets called 8 times. So 1 through 7 and then 0. Alright, so it's not um, all that hard to convert, for example, this simple function from an iterative version to a recursive version. And that's what we just did. We took the loop out. Instead of the loop, we just have one statement. And you might ask, well, how is that possible? How can you just take a loop out and make this execute many times? Well, the key is recursion, right? You call this add function. The fact that you're calling a function from itself, that gives you something like iteration, only it's different. It's, uh, it's called recursion. Also, you uh, to make it work properly, and let's see what happens if we do not have this. If we just comment out this, if, let's say we forgot, we forgot to put the if statement, which is checking for our base case and making sure that we return from the recursion. And you can probably guess that it'll just go into an infinite recursion. So add will call itself. And eventually n will get really small. Things will not go right. So here it went negative and then it just sort of stopped. Actually, this is useful because it might tell you roughly how many calls you can a simple function can call itself, how many times a function can call itself before it crashes, and it's about 200,000, 250,000. After 250, roughly 250,000 calls, you run out of stack space in this particular situation. It might be different for you. Okay, so, so this is not useful. This is runaway recursion. And you can sort of tell from here, I don't think I don't think we have all of that history of that's 250,000, 260,000 lines of output. It's not even all stored, so um, we're not going to be able to see the top of it. Eventually it crashes. So it ran out of space over here and crashes. Okay. So that's what happens if you forget the if statement. And so you have to be ready for this. Your first few iterative programs might have these bugs where even if you have an if statement, let's say you put the condition and was wrong and it didn't return ever. And, um, and so then you have to watch out for the situation where the program just seems to stop all of a sudden. And the real reason is that it ran out of stack space. And let's take a look at this in the debugger. Let's save this. Okay. Switch to the debug perspective. And with C++ programs, it always stops at the first statement. I'm going to step over. Prints out basic recursion for n equals 7. I'm going to step into this add function. And notice I got an add thing on the stack. And I can step through this. n is 7. I haven't hit the base case. Um, I initialize sum to 0. And I say sum is equal to n plus whatever n is. In this case, n is 7. So this is going to compute 7 plus the sum from 1 to 6. Right? Because add is always the sum from 1 to n. Now I'm going to call it with uh, n minus 1, which is 7 minus 1, which is 6. And so it should compute. 7 plus the sum from 1 to 6, and how do I do that? I go into this, I step into this recursion. Now it looks funny because it looks like you're still, you're sort of looping. No, that's actually not what's happening. Notice that there's two ads. So in this ad, you are at this position, 
in this ad you are at this position you're executing at this line of code all right so let's see, let's step through this and once I get here I want to step into and now you can see another thing on the stack you can go down and look at where you are in this other call to add inside that stack activation frame you are over here look in here you're over here too in this first call to add the value of n is 7 in the second call to add the value of n is 6 the third call to add the value is 5 okay so you want to keep all of that in mind so here we're stepping through this ad eventually we get to the recursive call we step into we get another thing on the stack with n equals 4 and we step through here again step into this recursive call we got yet another thing with n equals to 3 step through this oops I actually exited so now we can watch the exit so eventually I wanted to show you that we hit the base case but you can sort of I what I did was I stepped over something I stepped over a recursive call and I should have stepped into all right, so here we can see that we are unwinding the recursion. We got all the way from 7 to 0. And so now this is called unwinding the recursion. What does that mean? All of these things get popped off the stack. So watch. I'm just going to do a step over, step over, step over. And what you will see is the thing you want to keep in, you know, the thing you want to notice really is that the stack is getting smaller because you keep returning from all the old calls. Finally, we're down to our last call, or actually our first call to add. We called it many times, the stack got bigger, and then we started returning from these old calls to add. We are back at the oldest call to add. And now we return and we print out the sum, which is 28. Okay, so I would definitely recommend that you do this a few times to get a feel for how the stack changes, for how the variables are changing inside each invocation of that function and so on. I'm going to switch to the C++ perspective. So write up something like this, write a simple function like this. It's in the PDF. Um, this is essentially the same thing. I have a few changes, but I broke it down into steps. For instance, I didn't have just one return statement. Instead of that, what I did was I said int sum is equal to zero, sum is equal to n plus add n minus one. I could have made this a lot smaller, but this was just to show you that you can step through these things. And here, when you get to this statement, you have to step into. All right, so try that out. Try it, maybe try it out like this, all written out and. Um, more detail than you actually really need. You can make this, you actually can make add to all of this with just one single statement. Believe it or not, that is possible. You can do that, but we put in all these statements to break it down to see what all the different steps are. Okay, so if you call this add function with zero, it'll just say n is zero and then the sum is zero. If you call it with one, it should say n is one and zero and then one. So this is the, the final number is the answer. And these are telling you how many times this function was called recursively. Okay, so try this out. These are the kinds of outputs you should see. Okay, so we will pick up from here on the next video.